everyone. I'm Daisy Johnson, the assistant news editor at The Lumberjack, and welcome back to this episode of The Citizen. Today, I am joined by guests. Normally, we have guests, but we have been blessed today to have two great people show up. Uh, please introduce yourselves and what you guys do. Thanks, Daisy. I'm Whitney Uzcheck. I'm the assistant director of the Elections Department for Coconino County. And good morning, Daisy. I'm Esther Woods. I'm the Elections Director for Cooking New Kelly. And thanks for having us here. This is a great uh, opportunity for us to talk about elections. So we really appreciate it. Yep. Um, I'm just really happy to have you guys on. And so you guys have sent me this flyer, and I think that it would just be really great to dive into it because how do you think you have been able to get college students to see this flyer, if at all? Yeah, we are definitely trying to promote the four things for all of our voters to know across all of our communications platforms. So we recently rolled out an Instagram, which is at Coconino Woke. So that's a huge effort. We are tabling. We were just at NAU Constitution Day last Tuesday. We're trying to get into the open markets on Wednesdays. So we're definitely trying to reach out to NAU students so that they're aware of the upcoming election. And the uniqueness of this ballot, this ballot is a one-page, two-sided, 19-inch ballot, which is historical for Coconino County. It's the largest ballot our voters have ever seen. And I, I really do want to ask you guys about the large ballot, because this is kind of something people have been saying is, you know, it's a fear that it's it's so long, it's going to disrupt the voters. But I can't imagine anyone's going to get in there and say, oh, I'm not going to fill the rest of this out. So what what are the real fears of having such a long ballot? It can be an intimidating ballot. I, I mean, that's that's real and it's valid to feel that. Um, we're definitely trying to get the ballot in front of people as much as possible so they can make a plan and be prepared so they're not surprised on Election Day. Fortunately, in Arizona, there are a lot of options for our voters. So you can vote early by mail, early in person or on Election Day. On November 5th, and if you're at NAU, it's at South Beaver School. But really getting to know your ballot is going to be the best option for you. There's all sorts of resources. One of the best is our website, which is coganino.az.gov forward slash elections. Yeah, and this election is particularly very important because there are there's the presidential election as well as several uh, uh, the Senate seat as well as uh, congressional seats across the board. So there is usually a higher participation in uh, voter turnout on the November presidential year. Uh, and we are preparing to see more people at the polls and, and uh, registering to vote. I think every, like everything starts with the voter registration. And that deadline is October uh, 7th. And there are several different ways to, uh, to check your voter registration, to uh, ask our county reporters uh, about the status of, of, of voter registration or register to vote. And this is very, particularly very important in the, in, um, in this community because um, at NAU we have historically seen uh, a, a lot of excitement on election day of, of, of students coming in and showing up at the polls and waiting in line to, to cast their ballot. But unfortunately, sometimes they find themselves that they are not registered to vote or they're registered to vote in, in, a, in another county. So voter registration is the first step and the one that we are really trying to uh, 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 push and educate because uh, if you're not registered to, by that deadline of October 7th, you cannot participate. I think the second um, important thing, the historic nature of these, uh, of, our, of our ballot, there are uh, in some, some some precincts, because the elections are administered at a, at a smaller locality, are going to see anywhere from 34 to 37 different choices for voters, which is going to make uh, voting on election day, if you are coming in at the polls for the first time, it's going to make it challenging. Uh, we ran some scenarios with different uh, you know, uh, focus groups and, and, and people, and it could take anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes to read back the uh, front to back uh, the, the ballot. So that is a very uh, important element of, of the messaging that we're trying to push that uh, as voters get the information from our website, as they get the sample ballot, they are able to do that research prior to getting to the, to the polling places. Because the last thing we want to, to have is long lines because people are, are spending the time that they could spend um, you know, at home in their dorms, in their rooms, uh, trying to, to, to understand 
what does you know this proposition mean? What are what does what am I voting for? Uh, who are the candidates? What what do they stand for? What are the issues that uh, they uh, they are advocating for? So that's uh, a, again another element and another uh, important point to make about this November fifth general election. Yeah. So and you said a lot of really good things there that I want to touch on, um, and I think I saw somewhere that. This county is preparing for the highest voter turnout ever. I don't know if that's correct. Um, yeah. And how are you guys preparing for that? Uh, absolutely. So we, we again, uh, in 2020, the general election 2020 had the most uh, historic voter turnout at 81.5% of our 90,000 plus registered voters in our county. We are expecting, again, a record voter turnout of, uh, and of uh, Voter registration is a, an, an ongoing uh, thing, and there are several voter registration drives that are going on throughout our community, not just on the NAU campus, but in the, in the city of Williams, Fredonia, Page, like all those communities that are having people that are uh, are there to register voters and, and help voters to register. We are, um, for, for planning purposes, this is the election day, as you can imagine, it's a one-day event, and you, you cannot... Uh, you know, have a repeat the next day to say like, oh, like we ran out of ballots or we ran out of the uh, the logistics. We are preparing preparing for a peak of like a voter turnout of eighty three percent to ensure that everybody that wants to cast the ballot that is registered to uh, to vote in that county is able to do so on on election day with uh, with like without any uh, yeah hiccups in in that process. And, and I think we can know more about the. Uh, the logistics of our training and, and numbers of, of poll workers that we are um, deploying this election season, which again is going to be uh, record breaking for us in, in anticipation of the, of the excitement and, and voter turnout. So, related to our planning, um, we have 38 polling locations across our county, 15 are rope centers. At, I mentioned NAU South Beaver School is the location for NAU campus. That's a rope center. So, regardless of your precinct, you can vote on it. We So we have 38. Coconino County is the second largest geographic county in the country. So getting the polling locations to all of our polling sites, it's, it's just a large gas. So it does take us a while. Um, we're fortunate that we have a really strong election board worker recruitment team. And we anticipated the numbers to be very high for November. So we are going to have about 450 election day board workers across our county that are bipartisan. And because we anticipated in November to be so large, we had hired the bulk of them for July. So July and March, across the board, almost all of our election board workers for November have already seen an election. So this November election hopefully will be less intimidating for them and they're accustomed to supporting our voters throughout this election cycle. Right, because there must be some kind of fear like, you mentioned waiting in long lines and, you know, a lot of people working at, on the election day, I can imagine, are volunteers. So um, is that going to extend their work shift? But you guys are preparing for that. Yeah, really great questions. We, we cannot expand voting hours. They're 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. as state law. So unless a court order is, is issued to expand the voting hours, it will always be those hours. So... We're not anticipating them working any extended hours beyond what they've seen for July and November or July and March, other than the fact that they will have to count more pieces of paper, which is the ballots. Um, and then we are anticipating our voters taking 20 to 30 minutes, realistically, just to read the ballot. And that is, you know, added time to vote it itself. Mm -hmm. So we have sent out every polling uh, booth that we own. And also we have bought the ports for voters. So we're trying to make it as accessible and smooth for our voters and try to eliminate lines wherever we can proceed. So sorry, clipboards, how are they going to be used? So if a, if a voter is in line and there's no voting booths available, then we would offer them a clipboard with a security sleeve so they could vote the ballot while standing in the polling location. Well, yeah, it's a, again, it's a, an anticipation of a, a, a record turnout. Um, we want to make sure that those lines are moving and, and, and voters are having a good experience on, on, on election day. I think what's also important to, to note 
if there are lines, then there will always be kind of the rush, the peak hours, like usually when the polls open at first, because people are heading to work or heading to class, there is a uh, a peak that happens at that opening of the polls at 6 a.m. I don't know if it's, it's always in, on the campus, but uh, uh, definitely we see that in, in, in several of our vote centers and polling locations. And then at the end of the day, as people uh, uh, leave work or are done with their classes, then from that 5 to 7 o'clock hour, there is a rush to the polls for, for voters to cast it about. What's important is that even though it is like the, the, the time to close the polls at 7 p.m. Any voter that is going to be like in line by that 7 p.m. And if you're in line, you should stay in line and, and, uh, and be able to, you be able to cast your ballot. And I think that is very important for like having some of these conversations about like educating voters and, and also using, um, the, uh, our, our kind of communications channels uh, uh, across the board that we've established to making sure that yeah misinformation doesn't get uh, ahead of of, uh, of, uh, of the work that we are doing if you are in line at seven you have a right to continue to, uh, to, to vote and cast your ballot so that's that's very important the other element that um, Whitney touched on is our we have increased the number of vote centers we in the previous election cycles we've had three uh, vote centers two here in Flagstaff one into the city uh, we've increased that number to 15, and they are now more like spread out throughout the county. All the polling places in Flagstaff are vote centers that uh, again allow people to to cast their ballot from where they are, where they're working, what uh, like what their thing looks like, rather than being anchored to one uh, to one uh, polling site. The the vote center here at NAU uh, is the South Beaver uh, School. Uh, which is on the north side of campus, um, and uh, and uh, again we are expecting um, and, and staffing that appropriately for for the for the voter turnout. Uh, the again the importance of like vote centers and this this model that we are implementing. This is that will be this will be the first uh, major election that we are going to be testing this the system. So if there are glitches or things that we need to uh, learn and, and and, and adequately adapt to, we have plans um, on election days and, and then uh, plans afterwards to kind of reassess and reevaluate all that, all that work. So the system isn't new, it's been used in previous elections, but what you're saying is this is the first presidential election, so it's going to be essentially testing it like a, uh, times 10. Yeah, yeah, that's an accurate way to describe it. And so, I, can, I wanted to ask you guys, and I think you have on your flyer here, make your plan to vote. Mm -hmm. And um, for a first time voter, I want you guys to imagine that you lived on any campus. Maybe you don't want to wait in a long line. Mm -hmm. You have a class in the morning, a class in the afternoon. What is your plan to vote? So the first thing is, is to make sure that you're registered to vote and if you're registered to vote in Coconino County, then you can use my.arizona.vote to check it. If you are a registered voter from out of the state or in a different county, that doesn't mean you can't vote. It just means you can't vote for Coconino County unless you change your voter registration before October 7th. If you're from another state or another county, you just need to reach out to that election administration and request a ballot be mailed to you in advance. The deadline for this election for Arizona voters is October 25th to request those ballots. And that's because it takes six days to receive your ballot. And then you would basically need to drop it off on election day at one of the um, 38 polling locations across the county. So that's definitely the first step. The next is to then know how you would like to vote for all the different propositions and, and uh, candidates on the ballot. And then make your plan to vote for how you'd like to. So in the example, you indicated that it has to, that that's, an, you have a lot going on on election day. Mm -hmm. You don't have to wait until election day. You can request an early ballot. Uh, you can request an early ballot and not automatically be on the active early voting list if that's not your preference. You can just get it for this election, for example. You can go to the reporter's office on a day that you don't have as many classes. And, and get that done, voted in person, and provided to the reporter's office while you're there. And then 
if you do want to vote on election day, it sounds like for that schedule, nighttime would probably be, be your best option. So get there before 7 p.m. And there's some one on What did you say was the closest one for us? Yeah, it's South Beaver School. So with such a long ballot, how... And, and you guys are saying, you know, people should take the time before and really educate themselves. But if people don't, and I guess it was kind of this fear that people are voting about something that they don't know about. So how do you guys suggest that people address this? Yeah. Um, so if somebody does not want to vote for one of the choices on the ballot, they absolutely have that right. They do not have to vote on every single option that's available to them. In that situation, it's what we call an undervote. So it's where you vote for fewer than the options available for you. So if you can vote for one and you voted for nothing, that's an undervote. In the same vein, there is an overvote category where you are able to vote for one, but you voted for two. So in those situations, all of the other contests where you voted for the same number that you're allowed to vote for count. So if you don't want to vote for for a choice, you do not have to, and the rest of your ballot will still count, and you should 100% still submit it to the elections department. In that situation, our election night results put them into a category, which are at the undervotes and overvotes, and they don't go to that contest level question in that situation. But 100%, you should still love it. And also just a question on so what the ballot looks like itself. Like, like I said, you know, a lot of our audience and people here at NAU are going to be first-time voters. This is a basic question, but if you've never seen the ballot before, what does it look like? And is there education on there? And for what? And what do you need to come knowing already? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, We actually brought a sample ballot with us. So this is what the ballot looks like. This is the front of it. This is the back of it. So And it's a busy busy ballot. Sure. (laughs) It's got a lot going on, for sure. Um, So there's there is instruction right here at the top of the ballot that you can read through about how to vote. We do have ovals, so that's how you vote. You fill in the oval. If you make a mistake, you can let us know and you are allowed to get a, a new ballot so that you can fix that error. And then if not, there's uh, there's processes we have for how to identify voter intent and duplicate a ballot. So vote as much or as little as you wish to vote submit it to the elections department. Something to be aware of is that this doesn't have it because it's a sample ballot, but there are black and white markings along the sides of a ballot. Those are called timing marks. That is how our tabulators read the ballot. If there's any drawings on them or cuts to the paper, then our tabulators won't read them and we have to duplicate the ballot. Still counts in our system. It just slows down the election results a little bit. So something to be aware of. And an additional thing about the first-time voters, like it's knowing what ID to bring at the polls on election day. Yeah. Like uh, Arizona is a state that requires ID with the, at the polls, uh, and all of this information, including the the research for the uh, the candidates and the ballot the measures and initiatives, uh, is all in encompassing it on our uh, website. Uh, and we've been trying to make our web web page more interactive and more uh, 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 easy to easy to follow by that is hope me that they can see that uh, backslash election to the, to the web, uh, website that has all the all like has a section about first time voters and and the different IDs that forms of ID that you need to bring at the polls the polling places the polling uh, hours and all that information that first time voters uh, can prepare for in anticipation cast their ballot for the first time the bump and I feel like I should just ask this before everyone goes and tries it. Can you bring your student ID as verification? And no, you can. The student, uh, again, like there are very uh, uh, particular requirements yeah. that uh, people need to bring. You can bring your state issue ID, a driver's license, or, or a state ID. You can bring your tribal ID at the poll, uh, like a tribal enrollment ID with the, with the a picture and then there are some also some other options where you can bring a piece of like two pieces of mail like a voter registration card with like a utility bill or a bill from nau for your student that shows uh, your your current address and if, if that's the case then you are processed through the uh, um, as a regular voter on, on election day 
like if we have a same ratio, then it's a match. So there are some particular requirements, but a student ID, unfortunately, does not work as one. One uh, good opportunity for for uh, uh, in Arizona is the, that uh, all sorts of uh, Arizona uh, electronic IDs, like mobile IDs, like your driver's license or your insurance cards, if you have them electronically, those are acceptable forms of ID, and, mm -hmm. and voters can present those and, and cast a ballot as a regular uh, uh, voter election thing. If not, again, the process is we never turn people away from the polls and voters uh, coming in. They're going to have to be processed as provisional voters, which I know it's kind of like a technical term, but it just requires further research in the back end to make sure that that voter, again, had, uh, had uh, the proper ID, was registered, or if somebody shows up without any ID, we still process them uh, as this provisional voter and they have five days after the election to come back to the to one of the recorders offices and, and locations to uh, to show ID and that that way that that ballot that they cast is going to be uh, counted. So different options all all of those very valid all of those geared towards making the voter experience of seating with and as it is possible and uh, and and ensuring that everybody that is registered can cast their 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 ballot and make their decision for the betterment of our communities. And it really does seem like you guys are doing everything you can this year to make the process as seamless as possible. And I think with that we're gonna wrap up this episode. Um, thank you so much for tuning into the citizen and tune in next Friday for another episode.